just got word that we have Jack Harris ready to video in. Jack, can you hear us? Can yeah, guys, how you doing? LA Times. Jack, are you there? Hey, guys, how you doing? How's it going? Good. All right, Jack, your initial reaction to the Kings pick with Quentin Byfield. Yeah, you know, I think Jesse said it like, obviously this was, you know, Mark Unetti called this a coin flip pick for the team. Uh, it was one of these situations where you're picking number two and you can't, can't really go wrong. It seemed like this wasn't a big pool of guys they were having to, to decide between. Um, and there's a reason that, that Unetti called it probably the, the toughest draft decision he's had to make with the Kings. But in, in Quentin Byfield, you're getting a guy who has one of the more unique combinations of skill sets in, in hockey, which is when you look at that size and you look at the way he skates, it opens up so many potentials for the kinds of things he can do at the NHL level. Yes, he's got a lot of, uh, of development, yes, but you know that wasn't a, a huge consideration for the Kings from everything they were saying. Um, you know, Yanetti talked about the, the fact that where this team is in the rebuild process, kind of how they see the arc of the franchise going over the next couple of years. They didn't need somebody who they knew was going to be able to come in right away and play in the NHL uh, next season. They got somebody who has a really high ceiling, who has still a lot of development to go, which is uh, pretty exciting if you're a Kings fan when you think about it, seeing the way that he's already overpowering opponents his own age. You look at the, some of the some of the play he had in the OHL and the way that he can dominate with the puck in his own end. Um, he can control play. Uh, again, when you're able to skate at that size, uh, it's it's a pretty tough combination to turn down. Jack, every year teams are – they play it really cagey, really tight-lipped about who they're going to take. I think everybody assumed that New York was going to take Lafreniere, which has sort of essentially made the Kings the first overall pick as far as potential for movement or surprise picks. Um, leading up to this draft, I heard tons of arguments from people claiming to have inside information from the organization that they were going to take Tim Stutzla – so then some people said they were going to take Quentin Byfield. There was the whole, you know, angle that AEG owns a team in the DEL where uh, where Tim Stutzla plays. From your perspective, did you get any inclination heading into the draft which way they were going to go? Did they open up to you at all, or was it just as a secret secret for everybody else? No, I mean, there, there's a reason that uh, we were, we had we had some pre written stories about both guys ready to go, depending on who they picked today. Um, you know, it really seemed like it was that close. I mean, I, I, I mentioned it earlier. The, the biggest hint to me was was hearing that the, 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 the NHL readiness, the physical development of these guys, A, wasn't a huge consideration, and B, that, that in the Kings' view, it wasn't as big as they thought some people made it out to be. I mean, when you think about um, the way that some people have talked about Tim Stutzel uh, coming out of a, a, a professional league in Germany and one that you know, is modeled a lot like the AHL is, is a little more physical than other Euro uh, European leagues. It, it did seem like the consensus was he was going to be the guy who was going to be able to help teams right away. But in the Kings view, from everything they said, that wasn't the case. They liked the development they saw from Byfield over the last year. And one of the biggest things from him is the way he bounced back from the world juniors. I mean, every time he got talked about when, when he had his, his pre-draft media session, his world juniors performance, when he only had one point in seven games, he was benched for the gold medal game. It got brought up over and over again. But one of the things that impressed the Kings the most about him is the way he bounced back from that. He scored 25 points in his last 15 OHL games. He came back from a wrist injury over that last stretch to really finish his junior season strong. And it's that sort of that mental fortitude that, that you don't always get to see from guys when they go through their junior's career. Uh, they don't always get dealt with that kind of adversity, especially back to back the way he did. So to be able to bounce back from that, to finish as strong as he did, to have a whole summer to keep building onto that that really impressive frame. Um, they, the Kings weren't saying who they're taking, but I think it makes a lot of sense that, that this is the, the guy they went with. That echoes something that we heard from the play-by-play -play announcers of the Sudbury Wolves. We spoke to them earlier this summer in our draft prospect series. And I asked them about his personality. They said the same thing that you did, that after um, – you know, the issues with the uh, the international competition, that they felt he was the best player in the OHL, in the CHL, coming out of that break uh, down the stretch. And I also asked them, you know, everybody's known about him for a year or two now. That You know, he's been highly ranked at some points uh, over the past year. He was ra rated number one overall. And I asked them how he handles that pressure, how he handles that additional attention, you know, in other markets away from Sudbury. And they said he handled it great. You know, he was always coverage on uh, NBC that he wants to be a role model. Um, 
I mean, everything we know about this kid seems, and I apologize for calling him a kid, um, but seems to suggest that he's incredibly mature and that he will handle all of the additional pressure and all of the additional expectations like a champ. And, you know, the analytics community, um, I think, favor him over Lafreniere for a number of different reasons, at least a, a portion of them do. So, I mean, there's reason, there's real reason to be incredibly excited about the acquisition of Quentin Byfield, but beyond the fact that he was the number two overall pick. I mean, this just seems like the kind of person you want in your organization. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that, that some people in the organization talked about him was, was reminiscent to me of, um, you know, a lot of time was spent, I think, these last couple of weeks revisiting the Kings 2008 draft um, when they took Drew Doughty at number two overall. Uh, and, and such a big part of that story that year were the interviews that Mark Unetti and Mike Feuda and uh, and Dean Lombardi had at Drew Doughty's house had the, those those tough, honest conversations with him about the, the ways he needed to improve, the, the areas he had to get better, some of his training habits, some of his eating habits. And then he responded to them. And I think that they they really it really resonated with the organization, seeing the way that, again, Quentin Byfield on a really big stage when somebody like Alexis Lafreniere w- w- was playing very well in the same tournament. And even Tim Stutzel with, with a, a Germany team that struggled overall had a, had a pretty good tournament himself. For them to be able to see him go through that experience, not be bitter about it, come back as, as well as he did, uh, I, I think that's a really a really good sign. And, and when you're talking about the fine margins that separated these two players who, again, it, it doesn't seem like there was really a, a true right answer or wrong answer here. You're, you're trying to separate them as narrowly as possible. Uh, and those are some of the things that separate them. Uh, you know, another thing is like, this is a player the Kings don't really have in their system right now. The, you know, not to say that, that uh, Tim St- uh, Stutzel uh, is, uh, you know, a, a repeatable player, but they have guys who are similar in style to him. To have the size that Byfield's going to have up the middle, that really dominant guy who profiles as a true number one center, a two-way center who can dictate play a- a- in all areas of the ice, adding that into a, a pipeline that, that, you know, clearly is already <laughs> really well-renowned around the league uh, is, a, is a big step and I think a, a big add for a team trying to get back to where they were uh, earlier this decade. I mean, to add, heap a little more praise on to Quentin Byfield. You said the Kings don't have anyone like that in their system. I'm not sure anybody in the NHL has a guy like that in their system. I mean, six foot four, can apparently skate like the wind, back checks, four checks, can dangle, can shoot, and, you know, and has been on the stage for a while. Like, I mean, I know I'm just repeating myself over and over and over again, but super excited to see what Quentin Byfield can do in an L.A. Kings jersey. One final point on that. He... Hopefully we'll be wearing number 55, which has only been won by five players previously. The last one, Jeff Schultz, um, Braden Shen briefly, uh, Pavel Rosa. Kings fans of a certain vintage will remember how Pavel Rosa was supposed to be one of the guys to to take them to the promised land. Troy Crowder and Daryl Williams. So once again, welcome to the LA Kings, Quentin Byfield. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to watch, uh, you know, his, his development arc how quickly he can kind of, again, fill out that frame he has, how he looks when he gets to training camp, when he plays in some of the the, the prospect development situations. Um, but, yeah, I think if you're a Kings fan, there's a lot of reasons to be excited after today. Nothing but praise from Jack Harris. Jack, thanks again for your time today. Where can people go to follow all of your L.A. Kings content? Yeah, you can go to our, our latimes.com website under the hockey tab. Uh, a, a lot of – a lot of Kings pre-draft content. We'll have a lot of stuff coming out of it too. So yeah, I encourage everyone to check it out. Awesome. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Jack.